a lot of people would care. My mom would care. Vashon would care. Uh, Deputy Laura. Hank, thank you for raising your hand. Hank, Jason, uh, Phyllis Bill would care. Would, would they really care or is it fake? No, they would care. And you know, it's so funny. I feel like I'm in romper room because yeah. I'm calling all the names out. Uh, the young people don't know what I'm talking about. But I do. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Carolyn, uh, Mr. Carolyn, I'm ready for him. All right, everyone. Today is Monday. I am going to call the docket. Please listen to my instructions and follow through. When I call your name, please stand and let me know that you are here. If you do not do these things, if you do not answer, it's not going to be a great Monday for you. All right. In custody, we have Robert Caroline, Johnny Joe Webb, Johnny Joe Webb, Jose Torres. Thank you. Joanna Reyes, Joanna Reyes. LaShawn, that's a cool in a gang song. Joanna. Anthony Ortiz is in custody. Jonathan Boyd, that's going to be a plea at 130. Christopher Gonzalez, Christopher Gonzalez. Do I have the correct docket on this Monday? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Brandon Sierra. Everyone stand when I call your name so we can see you. Thank you. Destiny Alvarez. Delton Bailey. Thank you. And custody, we have Israel Cortez, Andrew Orozco, Timothy Nicholas, Amadean Smith. Adrian Delaterio, Juan Ramos, Miguel Ramos. Thank you. In custody, we have Jovan Amor, Juan Jose Flores. Thank you. In custody, we have Ricardo. Quiroz. Thank you, Quiroz Ramirez. You all told me the name, but y'all were a little bit slow. You let me hold that pause out there for a long time. <laughs> Juan Garcia, custody. Shannon McRae, custody. Reynaldo Macias, Reynaldo Macias. Michael Rosas, thank you. Haley Moy, Haley Moy. Rodolfo, uh, Rodolfo. Aceves, I'm gonna get your, your last name right and I see you got a haircut. <laughs> All right. Jose Ruiz, custody. James Brandyberg, custody. Shannon McRae, custody. Isaiah Varju. Isaiah Varju. We did not win each other. Yeah, it's, uh, yes, it's a motion. Yes. Uh, Kevin Carell, that is going to be recalled. And if I can see that file, Israel Reyna, Israel Reyna, Stephen Tennyson. Yeah. Yeah, I'm unable to find him. All right. Can I be excused? Uh, just one moment. Could I see the violation report on Stephen Tennyson as well? Delton Bailey. Delton Bailey. Thank you. You're on the docket twice. Uh, Jonathan Boyd. That's going to be a plea with Judge Hall. Timothy Nichols. Custody, John Valenciano, John Valenciano. And in custody, we have Michael Rodriguez. Is there anyone whose name was not called or you came in late? Yes, what is your name? Mark. All right, do you know who your attorney is? All right, do you have a case number or sit number? I'm sorry, what? Everyone, please whisper. What's your number? All right, just have a seat. We'll get with you. Wait, what's the last four digits? 
All right, thank you. Anyone else who came in late? Came in later, your name was not called? All right, who's the person with Meet Me at the Beach? Are you on the docket today? Does she yes. speak English? Please. Who's on the docket? I'm, I'm the attorney, we'll talk. About okay, it. all right, thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right, everyone, these are the rules. Please pay attention to these rules. Please follow these rules. If you follow the rules, even though we're not retired, the day will go smoothly. If you have someone who is in custody, just ask the deputies to bring them out. Once you've requested your client, please do not leave the courtroom because we have a limited number of deputies and for security reasons, we can only have a limited number of inmates out at one time. If you request somebody from custody and you leave, you're being selfish to your colleagues. So let's not make this a selfish Monday. If you have someone who wishes to communicate in a language other than English, whether you speak the language or not, you'll need to have an interpreter call. Once you request the interpreter, please do not leave the courtroom because there's a limited number of interpreters and the interpreters will usually arrive here in about five minutes. Uh, to my left, that's criminal trial division. To my right, that is family violence. Just pull your file, place it on their desk and have a seat. COVID is running rampant. I haven't had COVID or the flu or pneumonia. So let's try to keep that that way. COVID keeps knocking on my door, but I keep saying she is not here. So let's socially distance as much as we can, because I know some people went on vacations and they came back and they told me, didn't see you last week because I had COVID. So don't you be that selfish person who is breathing on people, coughing on people. I think we learned in preschool and in elementary, cover your mouth when you cough. You'd be surprised of the adult attorneys I see who don't do that. So we'd appreciate if you do that here. To my left, court reporter. Her equipment is very expensive. She tells me it costs over $10,000. Do not lean on her equipment. If you break the equipment, damage the equipment, you will have bought it. And that vacation that you were going on, maybe you can still go, or maybe you're going to have to go into your savings to pay for it. To the back is the probation officer. Vachon, would you raise your hand? Do not turn your back to her, because as you can see, she's seated. Do not lay your uh, papers on her desk. That's her desk. That's her office without doors. And if you have somebody who is on probation, confer with probation. They're just not here just to be here. Otherwise, I'm sure she would have other things she would rather be doing, maybe at home, watching TV, right? So please confer with her. Everyone, it is Monday. I know nobody wanted to be in court on Monday, but if we put a smile on our face and kindness in our cards and confer pleasantly, this will run smoothly. So everyone, do not approach the court unless you've conferred with your client and conferred with the state. And please do not talk up here with the clerks or behind the court reporter, we're on the record, when we're on the record. All right, everyone, please confer and let's have a great Monday. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. I have a small question. Yes. I sent an email. They're supposed to. Yes, ma'am. I'm not sure. I tried this morning, but I will wait patiently. I just want to make sure I didn't miss something. I sent an email. I will tell you when it first when they first did it, mine wouldn't work, but the clerks did. <laughs> I'm like, I guess they don't want me back here. No working till nine. No working till nine. I'll stick around. Hey, Mike. Good morning. Michael Hello. Hello, Judge. Okay, you have Tennyson? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, Deputy, could you make an announcement for Stephen Tennyson in the hallway, please? Stephen Tennyson. All right. I had a client the other day in the 144th, and she stayed in the hall. I'm just doing it. Oh, well, she that's. Never came inside. Oh, so, my right. gosh. Finally, I was leaving. <laughs> and if anybody wants to move to the other side. Oh, I'm here. Oh, my gosh. You don't get credit. But no one. All right, everyone, we're going to go on the record. And can I have a prosecutor, please? 
Court is calling night mag number 718533, State of Texas versus Stephen J. Tennyson. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense. Thomas Beck. All right, this hearing was scheduled at 9 a.m. It is now 9, 10 a.m. Defense requested that this case be called. We're here on a second violation report. The defendant uh, is has never reported to the pretrial service officer. Um, Defense, have you had any contact with your client? Not that I recall, Judge. All right. Would you like in the pretrial services, there's a phone number for your client as well as a phone number for the pretrial service officer before the court makes a, a ruling on this case? Would you like to try calling your client and the pretrial services officer? I've, I've called every number they have. Ah, Okay. All right, State. Uh, state asks for a bond forfeiture, Your Honor. All right, that will be uh, granted. Is uh, if your client makes an appearance, the court will reconsider. Thank you, Judge. All right, you're excused. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, there's that one. Welcome. So we're gonna ask the judge to find a new wish attorney so he can consider the offer. You need the name? Okay. I'm not gonna leave. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Morning. But I can be making money somewhere. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, yeah. You, you called me at it. We have his file, correct? Yes, his file was there. Oh, you can keep it there. I was just wondering if we had it. All right. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, do both. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. It's a budget okay. bond forfeiture, but I do want the judge's warrant to have him remanded with that bond. Yes. All right. Thank you. What do you need? Exactly how to deal with it. Oh, 
No matter what, that will be going back again. That that will be the same. Yeah, it's good points. All right. So let's look for it. Yeah. Couple weeks. Yes. Okay. I will get a go to me or another reset. Morning. They don't know anything about it. I'll be back. No, 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 it wasn't. But um, yeah, that's yeah, our recognition. Yeah, for the question on our side. Absolutely <laughs> Hello. <laughs> No, this is this is a real sense, man. I have kindness in my heart, patience on my heart. She should show you. Yeah, no, 
Well, I think they want to take the photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, they could be the, uh, the yeah. 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 Oh, that's yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. And if you mind, yeah, I don't send you some uh, yes. information yeah. on it. Yeah. 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 I'm not just trying to Also, I don't have any. All right. Um, Adriana, could you call the Mac and let them know that he's going to need an immigration attorney? All right. Thank you. Heroes. 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 Okay. I'm trying to roll the R. Right. All right, the party's on Kiros. Ready, Your Honor. All right, the interpreter is here. Uh, the interpreter. Yes, Your Honor. Good morning. Oh, hi. Good morning. hi. Thank you. All right. So, Mr. Kiros, are you a citizen or no? No, I'm not. All right. So, he'll need an immigration attorney. Yes, sir. Uh, the clerk is calling uh, Mac. Thank you, Judge. Have you received all the discovery? Yes, sir. And was an offer tendered? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, state the defense had informed the court that his client wanted to accept the agreement, but there is an issue with immigration. So, of course, nothing can be done until immigration gives him his warnings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recall this so we can make sure that we have an update from immigration. And I'll set it on... March 25th. March 25th, I'm in federal court. Can we do it the following day, Your Honor? Yes, we'll do March 26th. Thank you, Judge. All right, is there anything else? No, Your Honor. All right, and Mr. Kiros, we're just going to have you sit in the box and we'll have someone from Mac come down. Okay, are they going to come down now? Or? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. Even better. Are you going to sign the reset? Uh, no, since he's in custody, is he being uh, held by immigration? Uh, immigration hold. He's not going to pay the bond. So. All right. So, go anywhere. All right. So, March 26. Thank you. May I be excused? Uh, if you want to wait and talk to the MAC, I will. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. We're done. Hi. Do you need me to sign anything? Richard? Sure. All right, you're welcome. There you are. You're welcome. You too. Thank you. 
morning. Good morning. Oh, James, Just go ahead. 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 Just go you know, may I approach? Yes. Hi. So uh, I had Mr. Brandenburg brought over so that I thought we might be able to work out of something with like 1240 and we're not going to be able to. And so I was just going to go ahead and, and send it to him. Okay. okay. All right. James Brandenburg. Mm -hmm. Is he out here? Hi, Mr. Brandenburg. If you can come down, please. It's a new day, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Time is moving quickly, though. Yes. <laughs> Do you know, it feels like we're almost done with March. All right, Mr. Uh, Brandy Burt, what's going to end up happening with your case? If uh, your attorney wants you set on the docket again, she'll let us know and we'll set it. Otherwise, the next time we'll see you is if your case is being indicted. Do you understand? All right, State, do you have an update on when indictment is for Mr. Brandenburg or an attempt to indict? Family violence? Uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, do, oh, okay. <laughs> no, you're on the right yeah. way. In the new year, the deputies change where everybody stood because for security reasons. On this case, it's a violation. And I'm wondering what is the indictment time on that if you all do indict it? Okay, I can, um, I, I think she was speaking with Zach, but I can confer with her and find out. Okay, so that's what will end up happening next in the process. If your case is indicted, it will be indicted. Then we'll come back on the day it's been indicted. Otherwise, if you want a setting before then, then your attorney will have to request it. Do you understand? All right, do you have any questions, Mr. Brandenburg? Okay. All right, then you uh, deputies, we're done with Mr. Uh, Brandenburg. Thank okay. you, Phyllis. Always good seeing you. you. Isaiah Verju. I'm present, Your Honor. Actually, Your Honor, I think we learned it's Vargu. Oh, Vargu. That is so too. That is true. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Varu, you, you need to unmute yourself and show your video. All right, Mr. Varu, you, you need to unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Your, attorney is, your attorney is requesting to withdraw. Um. I don't know if you're planning on appealing or if you want a new trial, but if you want a, a new trial, then that motion will be, have to be filed. If you are asking to have an appeal perfected, then if you want an uh, attorney appointed, you'll have to qualify for an appointed attorney. I just can't say, oh, you get an appellate attorney. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. So uh, we're gonna go on the record. Court is calling 2021-CR-10130, State of Texas versus Isaiah Verhu. And for uh, the defense? Uh, Jessica Gonzalez for Mr. Verhu. All right. Oh, and we really don't need a state's <laughs> counsel. That's okay. And are you Mr. Verhu? Yes, ma'am. All right, your attorney has filed a motion to withdraw. That's correct. And do you have any objections? No, ma'am. 
All right. The only problem with your motion, you're saying so that a qualified appellate attorney may be appointed? Yes, Your Honor. Can I speak to that? Yes. Okay. So I have spoken with my client and I did explain to him his um, appellate rights as well as the motion for new trial. I did go ahead, since we were coming up on those deadlines, I went ahead and filed the notice to appeal as well as the motion for new trial, just a generic motion for new trial. But I did explain to him my limitations as an appellate attorney. He has not made the final decision if he wants to go forward with that. So I went ahead and filed those two things so it would be timely. And then as far as an appellate attorney, the court previously did qualify him as an indigent person when I requested a uh, expert on the case. I'm happy to go ahead and forward that over to the court so they have his affidavit of indigency on file. It's, he needs to do an updated affidavit of indigency. Okay. So that one was just for- For that purpose. Yes. I understand, Your Honor. Oh. And I can go ahead and send that over to him. I can just help bridge the communication. I can. I have yes. one on file. I can email him that and he can get that back to me and I'll forward it to Norma. All right. Is there anything else from either side? Nothing further. We'll All right. With that, your motion will be granted. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. You're May welcome. my client and I be excused? Yes. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. All right, that's that one. All right, everyone, I go in order of appearance. All right, that's that. All right, is the interpreter here? Oh, we don't need an interpreter on this case. Uh, Johnny, you ready? Yes, ma'am. All right, Mr. Aceves, Aceves? Aceves. Aceves. <laughs> All right. I never know what to do with the V's either. With what, ma'am? The V's. You know, in the names to pr pronounce it correctly. It's always be. Be. I say this. Okay. All right. How's everything going on probation? Pretty good, man. And how's the employment? Awesome. Yeah, it's pretty good, yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Probation. I know they're here for removal of GPS. Yes, Judge. Um, in reviewing Mr. Aceves' file, it <laughs> indicates that he's been in compliance with everything. He's doing really well. Um, there's not been any, um, it hasn't been any violations or anything with his GPS. Everything seems to be going good. All right. Your Honor, I, I have to be honest with the court. He did have a violation Saturday or Sunday, right? He, he was out. It, he he should have been home at two o'clock or something. He thought it was later than that. So he went to Walmart, I believe. Yeah. And that was it. And he called him right away and he went back home. That was it. That's the only thing. And I wanted to be honest with the court because it's going to come in and I don't want the court to think I like her. Okay. So Now, I appreciate your honesty. Well, thank you. Yeah. And so he was at the Walmart. Yes, ma'am. Right, Walmart? Yeah, um, I was returning a uh, uh, battery charger. Battery charger that I wanted to return. Okay. All right. Your Honor, uh, I, do, would, I would like to point out, though, the last time we were in court, we modified his conditions for 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday through Saturday. Right. So it may not be a violation that comes in. We have not received it as a violation. Okay. What time were you at the Walmart? Uh, 3 p.m. 
and oh. that was for any purposes. Yes, it wasn't just for work or anything like that. So you were correct, and your uh, yeah, you know, I have it here. So. All this time from day one, not one if, if ex, deleting this one, not one violation, Your Honor. Yes. Yes. And I do have it on my docket sheet that it was for 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. for all purposes. For. All right. So do you have any objections to removal of GPS? No, Your Honor. I did speak to Mr. Aceves uh, briefly. He says that everything's going well with his new job. He feels like everything is going good. So we don't have any objections. At all right. Time. So I'm going to remove GPS. But here's the thing. I know this is San Antonio. A lot of things are about to come upon us, mainly Fiesta. So don't get wild and crazy doing Fiesta. And remember, you're not allowed to drink any alcohol on probation. And I know Fiesta, it's an alcohol fest, let's be honest. But you can walk down the street, everybody booth has an alcohol, has alcohol in it. Everybody has those long things with the alcohol in it. Don't get caught up in that, understand? Yes, we got all right, so I'll. Uh... I really appreciate it, Your Honor. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you. I'm glad you're you're on track and everything is working out for you. Of course, you have a great attorney. If anything goes wrong, or if there are any issues, you know you can always contact your attorney. If you feel as though probation is not addressing something, you can always come to court and talk to the probation officer here, or come to me. Yes, Your Honor. All right. So I'll uh, order removal of the GPS. Thank you, Judge. All right. Okay, we'll be excused. Yes, we can. But I need to give you all another check-in day because I'm ordering removal of GPS. But I'm going to have you all come back after uh, Fiesta. Okay. So we'll come back. Uh, let's. We're going to have our own Fiesta tonight. So <laughs> tomorrow then. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll come back. May 27? Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Do you need a reset form? No, ma'am. Okay. All right. So we'll be back on May 27th. All right. All right. Good Thank job. You. Thank you. And I like the new haircut. <laughs> Judge, it's not nice to talk about hair in front of a bald guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So All right. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Can you let him know? And let me see. I think his uh his attorney. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you'll let his attorney know, Ruby Casares. Yeah, just was uh, recalled for today. And yes. Make the docket, so we could just get another setting. Resolve it. All right, Deputy Laura, is it possible to get Ruby Casares here? I can't hear you. Is it possible to get Ruby Casares here? We can request them. I just don't know if they have. All right, we'll request them and have them brought over. And you That's can fine. run around wherever you need to run around to. I need to get to Wilson County in an hour, and I'll be back. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. They're going to reach. If you give her that information, Miguel Ramos. We are on that matter, Your Honor. He's present in the courtroom. All right. M Miguel Ramos, you need to come forward. First appearance. We have an, uh, we have an offer. I'd like to explain it to my client, Judge, and uh, we can have a recent. Okay. All right. Who's the prosecutor on Miguel Ramos? All right. Uh, so, counsel, do you have all the discovery? We do, Yana. And how old are you, Mr. Ramos? 48. Okay. I'm going to give you a plea deadline date. Just one moment. I'm going to give you a plea deadline date on March 25th. So on that date, you need to let the court know whether or not you're accepting the state's offer. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Can I have a reset form, please? Is that a... A presence in court. Is that correct, Judge? Yes. On the 25th? Yes. I'm going to give you a reset form. Okay. Let me show it to you.
All right, once you sign that and turn it back into the clerk, you're excused. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Okay. So I'll tell the bailiff they can send them back. Do you need my mobile number? Oh, okay. Okay. Um, it's um, 210-857-48-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-
All right, if you'll come down, sir. Who's the attorney? I'm Robert Caroline. I am. All right, thank you. Please. What do you need? Oh, they're ready. I didn't know they were ready. Hi. So where are we with where Veterans Treatment Court? Your Honor, um, so pretty much we, we did what let me back up. I apologize. Um, so last week we did assess Mr. Caroline. Thank you. All right, everyone, please whisper. And if everyone could do me a favor, because it is Monday, the same tone and loudness that you have in the audience, bring it when you're before the court. Yes. Good morning, Your Honor. Um, so last week um, we did assess Mr. Caroline like you requested due to the fact that he was in custody. We kind of had to pull a few things to get him uh, in connection with our BJMs, which he was able to do so. Um, I appreciate his honesty and forthcomingness on everything. We were working around a few barriers to the fact that he was in custody for the file, but we weren't able to get the blue folder to the staffing table last Thursday. Unfortunately, um, that's when I'm bringing Mr. Arnold here. Um, I was not I was not getting a response from the state, and that's where I'm going to pass it over to the state to kind of explain to the court where we're at because we've done um, we've done everything we can. All right, where are we? So in regards to. All right, so here's the thing. That equipment on that desk is $10,000. If y'all want to <laughs> accidentally it. touch it, you <laughs> will have bought it. Yes. So there's no DD-214 in the file, and we need a DD-214 in order to properly evaluate for veterans treatment court, at least from the state side. Generally, when a defendant is incarcerated, the um, defense will work to provide a DD-214. Do you have that form? Do um, so you know where it is? Whisper. As possible, my sister... Um, um, well, can't this be looked up online? I have one. I, I, I don't have my... My paperwork's been wet and stolen. No, 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 no. Here's my question. Number one, can this be looked up online? Yes or no? I don't believe so, no. I just had to do my own DD-214. Okay. And you have to submit through the VA a request that SF-180. I believe it's an SF-180. And that request goes to wherever it goes in the government. And it takes about 60 days, 30 or 60 days to get back. If oh, we, we're not going to be waiting for 60 days. You did confirm your honor, the fact that he wasn't our service. He wasn't the point. Um, we, we confirmed all that through DOD. Um, part of the files that we provide to the state is that's when they're requesting a DD-214. Sometimes we're able to get one. Sometimes we can just check and confirm through through the different records. All right, so he's confirmed military. So what are we doing? Uh, we're here on sentencing. No, no, no. I mean, I'm, I'm, when I say what are we doing, I'm, I'm looking at the state because here's the thing. I understand it's government. I understand the issues with government. But here is my issue. Number one. The Veterans Treatment Program can't have a case pending. It's pretrial to version, sort of. I can get with felony drug court, and I know felony drug court is different, but if I have someone here with me on a Monday for felony drug court, we will know before the week is out whether or not they've been accepted. But with Veterans Treatment Court, it's like months upon months. He's been in custody. He's a veteran. Everybody says he's a veteran. He's been in custody since January. How do y'all streamline y'all process? Because I've had people with Veterans Treatment Court. Sometimes we wait for three months. Sometimes it's four months. So how do y'all, how are y'all going to streamline your process? I know y'all always want that form. They're saying he's, he's in the military. They verified that he's in the military. It appears that it's from the state side and not anybody else's side. So, I mean, he's Marine Corps? Yes. So we have somebody who's in the Marines, who's been sitting over at the Bear County Jail since January, and we're waiting for a form, and we've been doing this, like I say, since January. This is about our third time here. It is. And then I, my hands are tied because I'm being told he cannot be on probation. Y'all are only doing this pre-trial diversion thing with them, it it appears to the court it doesn't help to be doing pre-trial diversions with them if they're just going to be sitting at the jail. Yeah, so. I'm receiving an achievement medal in the prison. Well, 
I mean, he said he received medals from fighting in the Gulf. My my brother fought in the Gulf as well. So how 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 can we expedite this? And when I say expedite this, I mean before the end of March. It's from the, are you asking? Me, yes, the state. Are you asking the state. I'm asking whoever wherever the ball is stopped and not moving towards the goal line, who do I need to speak to? Who's on defense? Well, I guess that'd be me, Your Honor. Okay, so what does he need? He needs a DD to 14. All right, how is he, he going to get that in the Bear County Jail? Defense attorney uh, assists him and does the uh, fills out the paperwork to request it or talks to his family. I mean, this has happened many times. We've had many defendants he doesn't know incarcerated in uh, Bear County Jail. And defense attorneys have always assisted in obtaining a DD-214. All right. So, Mr. Caroline, this is where we are. This has been going on since January. One or two things are going to happen. I'm sorry the government is not there for you. We can either bring this back in March. Maybe you have the form. Maybe not. From what I'm getting from this side is they're not accepting you without that form. Even though they're saying they've checked and they know you've been in the Marine Corps, I thank you for your service, but my hands are tied. There's nothing I can do. I can't go out and get your form for you because then guess what? I'm no longer the judge. I work for you. I'm I'm working for you. Wish I could, but you know, may I elaborate on one point? Sure. The, the reason that we need the DD-214 is we need to determine whether there is a nexus between service and why we're here today as far as offenses and if there is to determine how and what we can treat and one of the reasons is you know i'm a veteran myself i served in afghanistan but my dd214 will reflect my time overseas where i served what awards i was given if any you can't merely determine and allow somebody into the program just because it's confirmed that they're a veteran we unfortunately get people all the time who they're a veteran it's verified and they say they were part of SEAL Team 6 that uh, killed Osama bin Laden. There's people that make claims all the time without well, he, being able to verify any of those claims. Well, here's the thing. The people who are claiming that they were a part of SEAL Team 6 or, or whatever, sometimes maybe they were, or sometimes they're just doing that so they can get in the program. Because I've seen a lot of people who have mental health issues, but if it's not related to their service, then they're not accepted. So here's the thing, uh, Mr. Seelaw, I just Googled. You can go online and do the application. I'm not allowed to do it because, again, I become this witness. But if you go online on your phone or elsewhere and you can sit in the box, ask him questions and just put in a, a request for the DD-214. It's right out here. Request military service records. And you can do it the, through va.gov home. We can either do that or either we can go ahead and sentence him today. And I will take into account his Marine Corps military service. Do you want to wait or do you want to be sentenced today? I prefer being sentenced today. Okay. Because yeah. we've been here three times. Oh, I know. You've been here since January. I was on the discharge and I was in MAGTAP 388. Yeah. Marine Air Ground Task Force under Colonel then Admire, King General Admire. And I, okay. No, I, I without a DD two fourteen, your honor, there's no way to. Uh, I understand to it. The discharge yeah. twenty nine pounds. I understand it. I be I believe you. I don't know why okay. part of the entrance into Veterans Treatment Court doesn't include them helping you, them going online and doing this. Felony Drug Court does it all the time because obviously you have issues, so you need help. And I would think, and, and this is my problem. And I don't know what's happening with Veterans Treatment Court. And I understand you guys are doing all you can do. But I would think that part of a program is helping somebody get into the program, not saying, hey, write a letter, not saying, write a letter why you want to be in the program. Look for your DD-214 on your own, because obviously people are here. So that means they're going through changes. If somebody before me is a heroin addict, and they're in the throes of their addiction. I'm not going to ask them to write me a letter because they're they're not in the right mind frame to do that. I am going to ask them, hey, where is this located? And I'm going to take them step by step. And anything that can be done online, I'm going to help them do it online because guess what? They're not in the right main front, mind frame to do what needs to be done because otherwise they wouldn't be here. So thank I you. Asked, I asked the court to put them on probation so that 
the probation office can give him the programs that he does need and maybe help him somewhere on, on the treatment end. Um, but uh, the, All right, this is what I'm going to do. Oh, thank you all so much. I appreciate it. This is what I'm going to do. I am going to um, go forward with your sentencing today. I'm going to see about getting you in a felony drug court. We can do that out of custody. Felony drug court has a dual diagnosis program, but you're going to have to make sure you contact them today. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And felony drug court, if you're sent over there today or tomorrow when you release, we will have an answer back from them no later than next week instead of months. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Uh, could I see uh, criminal trial division? Court is going to call 2023-CR-10711, State of Texas versus Robert Edmund Carroll. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Daniel Ezra Bar, the State of Texas. Defense? Uh, James C. Law for the defense. His last name is Carolyn, Your Honor. Oh, Carolyn. All right. All right. We are here for sentencing. And are you, you're Mr. Carolyn, correct? Yes, ma'am. We're here for sentencing. The defendant entered a plea on January 8th to guilty of count one and guilty of count two. The court found there was sufficient evidence to find you guilty of count one and count two. And then you were referred to the Veterans Treatment Court. Off the record, we've discovered that Veterans Treatment Court needs you on your own to get your DD-214, that they're not helping with that. That's up to you. So... My understanding is that you wish to proceed uh, with this sentencing without that documentation. Is that correct, sir? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, probation. Are you ready on Mr. Carolyn? So this is what the court is going to do. Count one and count two will run concurrently. I'm going to do a referral to felony drug court. Their dual diagnosis. Punishment is to be assessed at five years in the prison, suspended and probated for five years. There's a $1,500 fine. That will be probated. Thank you, Ron. You're welcome. Uh, proof of employment or SSI within 35 days, there should be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. If you're released today, do you have a place to stay? Your sister. Yes, yes, yes ma'am. All right, who with? Well, possibly my sister. All right, here's the thing about that. Have you talked to her and has she said? No, no, I haven't, to be honest with you. I didn't want to just advocate anything. What's your plan B? Um, Can you raise B. your right hand for me, please? Yes, Do you ma solemnly <laughs> swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth will help you, God? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record. Robert Edmund Caroline. All right, so who would you be living with or what's your plan? Um, well, just kind of, kind of caught me off guard. I was kind of planning on going on checking into the the, the veterans uh, the, the going to the VA program where they had to, or I could check in right there at the hospital. Okay. I haven't checked in there before. I was just planning to go there. That's where I was planning to go the night or the night I got in trouble or the day I got in trouble. I was actually planning to go to the VA, VA hospital. VA hospital is right. Um, but Sean, could you call Herman back to see what programs, veterans treatment program, housing they have for veterans. We're, we're going to find a place for you, okay? Yes, ma'am. It was in-house that, that, that I was there last time, and, and, and I like the staff there. I was very, very cooperative, and I, I benefited from being there. All right. We're going to do anger management. Two hundred hours of community service restitution, and with the community service restitution, is there if there is a specific place you would like to do your community service and it's approved by probation, then you'll be allowed to do it there. You understand? Yes, ma'am. Can I add something, Your Honor? Yes. 
I, one thing I was doing out in society was I was cleaning up the waterway along where the waterway is, what flows into where our waterway is, mm -hmm. the big tank is at. I've been picking up through there and cleaning and cleaning the tunnels up in through there. I, oh, just a lot like of that kind of stuff. Love I enjoy doing that. I enjoy All right, let that. probation now. And I'm sure they'll... Antonio Christmas present, but it lasted a little longer than I suspected. Let probation know. All right, let probation know. Okay. And if yes, there's an issue with it, then you can always come back to court. Yes, ma'am. And let me know. Hopefully there's no issues. I'm gonna, there won't be. All right. I'm going to do fill visits one time per month until in treatment. Uh, do you have any children? Um, I have a daughter, but she's in college, probably out of college. Okay. All right. There's to be regular reporting. by Zoom or in person. There's to be regular UAs. So what is your uh, drug or alcohol use? Um, basically it was um, what we call cream or ice. And uh, I was really, really kind of over it. It really was, I was, you know, honestly I told myself if I had to go to jail to get off, to get in and detox, I was gonna do it. You know what I mean? I was just tired, tired of it. Sick and tired of being sick and tired. All right, so I was clean for a long period of time too, man. So all right, so this is what we're going to do. Felony drug court, we're going to do the referral for them in custody. They will see you before the week is out because we get it into them on Monday. They'll be able to see you, and I'll put an email in if nobody objects to no. felony drug court. No objection. No objection. All right, so. Thank you. And then they'll be able to help you with housing as well. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, Your Honor. You're welcome. Uh, probation, is there anything else? All right, is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? No, ma'am, no, ma'am. Just th thank, thank you for all that you've done and, and, and overlooked and stuff. And I am very sorry that, that this incident took place. I'm very embarrassed about it. Actually, actually kind of friends of mine, I know them one time. So geez, I just was sorry that, that that happened. I was busy working on something to send to my daughter and it was valuable. And I, had moved around numerous times and and um, and my things were all taken from me. So, I mean, I got kind of strange, I guess, you know, and, I, and I'm sorry that that happened. Okay. All right. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yeah. And did you sign it? Y yes, ma'am. All right. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, we can go off the record. Remember what I said. If there's some issue, you can always come back to the court and speak with probation if you feel as though your probation officer is not addressing it, okay? Okay, yes, ma'am. All right, I'm going to send an email now to uh, Felony Drug Court. Thank you very much, Judge. All I right. appreciate your considerations in this matter. All right. Thank All right. you. Good luck. Thank you, ma'am. Right. You're welcome. Have a nice day. You too. Good luck. Have you
Ne Hello. Uh, what are you approaching on? Oh, do you need to have them pull the file? Who's your client? Uh, Haley Moore, a uh, boy. Second to last page, Judge. He also had some VRs. All right. Just one moment and we'll take you on. Thank you. Uh, Moy, M O Y. And there's some VRs in there for her as well. Yeah. All right. And could, uh, you make an announcement for Haley Lauren Moy. Court is calling 2024 CR 1853 and 2024 CR 1854. State of Texas versus Haley Moy. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Zach Dunn for the state, Your Honor. Defense. Robert Gear for defendant Haley Moy. Judge, and we are not ready as my client is not present. All right, this hearing was scheduled at 9 a.m. It is now 10.07 a.m. Your client did not answer the docket. Deputy Laura, did you make an announcement? Yes, Your Honor, there's no one under that new house. All right, do you have any idea where your client is? I do not, Your Honor. All right, state. Your Honor, the state would respectfully request a bond for the chair. All right, that will be granted in each cause number. Your client will be remanded without bond. If your client makes an appearance, the court will reconsider. And for the record, the court will also note that there is a second violation report as well due to noncompliance. All right, thank you. Thank you, Judge. Can I see the files on uh, Johnny Joe Webb, please? Israel Cortez. Hello, Mr. Cortez. Hello, Your Honor. All right, so where are we on discovery? I have discovery, Judge. The state has provided me. Okay. 
And State, were you prepared to make an offer or no? Not today, Your Honor. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to recall this for April 29th. April 29th. Okay. And Judge. at that time, State will tender an offer. Thank you, Judge. Is there anything else? No, Judge. All right. So on that date, State is to tender offer, and then I'll need acknowledgement of discovery signed. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Do you have any questions, sir? No, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. A couple of weeks ago, I was here on Leon Small, and Mr. Small uh, decided to boogie. Yes. And uh, cut off his monitor. Mm -hmm. I'm filing, I've filed motions to withdraw on all four cases. I would ask you to address that. All right. Once he is in custody, we'll take it up. I don't know if that's going to happen. Well, I think it'll happen. Sometimes people get tired of running. And usually when people do that, you know where, where they can be found? At Which, Mama's place on Thanksgiving. That's what that's <laughs> what my uh, prior investigator, uh, William Grantley Boxhill, used to always tell me. He's, yeah. he's like, Stephanie, they're right at their mom's house. They, they go ahead and they, they camp out on Christmas or Mother's Day or, mm -hmm. Christmas or Thanksgiving. And they usually are successful. Yes. All right. So once he's in custody, we'll take your, your motions up. Okay. All right. Thank you. Destiny Alvarez. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. Um, so she is not actually here. She's in the Guadalupe County Jail. Ah. She was sentenced um, there a couple weeks ago. She was given 20 days Guadalupe County Jail as a condition of her probation, but also sentenced to CRTC, which I think is going to be an issue because I don't think she's going to be able to go to get treatment with pending cases. Um, but right. she's just not present. Today. Let me ask you. So does Guadalupe County, do they do Zoom? Does anyone know? I don't know. I don't believe it. Okay. All right. So what we'll do then is we're going to have to have her bench warranted here then. Unless you find out that they do Zoom there. Okay. I can, I can call over and, and see, but I don't know. Okay. So we are going to recall this. We'll recall it for March 25th. Is that good for you? Because I know you're coming. The 25th, I do have something that day. Is it possible to do it in one of the days after that this week, or does it have to be on Monday? No. We can do it on the 26th. 26 works for me, if it works for you. 26 will work. Okay. Thank you, Robert. All right, you're welcome. So we'll put it as March 26th. And we'll do a bench warrant. If for some reason you're able to do it by Zoom, just let us know and we'll cancel the bench warrant. I will, Judge. I'll call All right. There. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Always good seeing you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, the court is recessing at 12. So I see people sitting, chatting, but you all need to start chatting with prosecutors because I'm telling you, it's a new day. It's the dawn of a new day. All of this rushing forward to the court at 1145, not gonna happen. So please confer. Yeah, okay. <laughs>
Yes. Yes. Evaluated for competency, Your Honor. All right. So you need to have the file pulled. You need to confer with the state. I did confer with the state judge. All right. So you need to have the file pulled. No. So the court's file. Gus Gallegos. Just real quick, uh, he's an inmate set for tomorrow, but we have an agreed incompetency on Wednesday. So I didn't know. Okay. Uh, it was actually set for agreed incompetency last week, but they couldn't get him in there. All right. So what's going to happen on this case, though? Well, it's on those cases. No, I mean, what's the ultimate outcome for these two cases? Well, that depends if they can restore his incompetency. Well, you're saying he's agreed competency or incompetent? Okay. It's, the report from the doctor is he's not competent. Okay. And that's uh, that will be held on Wednesday. All right, we're going to recall it for May 27th. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Do you want me to take those files back? or No. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome.
Juan Ramos. Who's the attorney for Juan Ramos? Oh, thank you. Russian. <laughs> Date on Israel Cortez. Judge said it's twenty seventh of April. Yeah. Hi. So uh, today there was a plea deadline date for February twenty second. Then it was recalled for March fourth for today. Yes. So, what is happening with the plea deadline? Is he does he want a jury trial? He does. Sir. We do have a motion filed to, uh, to contest the identification. It's a single identification. Case. Okay. All right. So We'd like to hear that first. That might help us decide. And that I have to run with the trial. So, um, state. This is an aggravated robbery case. Defense okay. is requesting a jury trial. Okay. So which week is, is you all, and we're probably looking in May. Uh, defense is probably gonna be May, but I'll let you know. I know there are other cases that are in front of yours. So you're probably not gonna be the first one in May, but I try to get you on the docket in May. And counsel, if there's an issue with identification, state is, I'm sure they'll look at it and let you know. Uh, it's May 14th, Judge. Sometimes it helps to have somebody actually talk about it. Yes. Instead of just getting mm -hmm. reports. All right. So there's an issue here. The defense is saying with identification. Okay. So if you all want to look into that, and maybe this may resolve itself, we shall see. So we're going to recall this for jury trial on May 14th. Uh, your plea deadline date has expired. I will not consider any plea bargain agreements in this case without good cause. Otherwise, you have to plea open to the court. Do you understand? All right. Is there anything else? All right. Thank you. Jovan Amor. Moore. So, are you on this case, or is it Gail Calderola? It's it's Gail, Your Honor. Okay. I'm appearing on her behalf today. Right. So, you're saying there is perhaps a competency issue? Yes, Judge. All right. So, I'm going to recall this for March 25th, that that uh, request needs to be filed before then. All right. Uh, do you have any questions, Mr. Moore? I feel like I'm being set up in this uh, occasion right now. All right, so let me explain to you what's going on. And if you don't understand something that I'm saying, just let me know, all right? So in order for the defense to pr proceed with trial, they have to know that you're competent. For example, you know who your attorney is, you know what your charges are, you know the consequences of entering a plea or not entering a plea, you know what a jury trial is, those are things. Now, they're saying that they may have some concerns about that, so what's gonna end up happening is they're gonna file a motion, a doctor is gonna see you, and a doc doctor will make the determination whether or not you can proceed forward. If the doctor says you can pr proceed forward, we'll proceed forward, do you understand? Understand, man. All right. So what I can tell you is none of this is saying that you're guilty or not guilty. This is just the process. But I'm bringing you back on March 25th because I want to make sure that everything is filed so you won't just be waiting at the jail. All right. I understand that, ma'am. Okay. It's just the process. Yes, it's the process. It's the process. So when I return, I have a lot to say to you. Yes. So when we come back on March 25th, that's to make sure that they file the motion to how you evaluate it. Now, when you'll be evaluated, that will depend on where you are in the line because we have a limited number of doctors to evaluate people. 
there's not enough money for all the doctors. So once that's done, we'll make sure that everything proceeds as quickly as possible for you, but not violating your due process rights. All right. I understand. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Okay. Thank you. You have a blessed day as well. Oh, thank you. You too. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Yes. Andrew Orozco, it appears we just saw you the other day. Every day you see me, it's a great <laughs> I like the suit again. All right, what are we doing with Mr. Orozco? Well, Your Honor, the state has tendered an offer. We are respectfully declining that offer. So okay, was the offer tendered today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, how old are you, sir? I'm 34 years old, miss. All right. So what I do, I always give people a chance to think about the offer, especially when an offer is just tender today. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to recall you for a plea deadline date, and then we'll set you for a jury trial date. So what I'm to oh, I, oh, well, I was trying to ask them if I can get the 10 years. No, no, no. Yeah. The judge should not hear that. Oh, so here's the thing with, let me, let me explain something to you. Wait a minute. Stop, stop. Time out. Yeah, I, I, I got light on. Time I got out. light. Yes. All right, we're gonna light. we're gonna send you out. So I want you to listen to me clearly. Yes, it is not my role to hear the facts in this case. What ends up happening if you go to a jury trial, a jury will hear it. If you want a bench trial, then I will hear the facts of the case. That's how it works. I'm not allowed to hear your plea negotiations with the state and your defense counsel, unless they want me to hear that, but that is not allowed. Here's the thing, sir. I understand that you're upset and that you want to be out. I don't know why you're not facing me. Because I'm mad, miss. Because yeah. SCP, uh -huh. he lied to me. They've been harassing me for two years. Mm -hmm. So does he need an evaluation or no? I don't believe so, Your Honor. We've been effectively been able to communicate. Okay. All right. So here's the thing, because SAPD, according to you, lied to you, and because they treated you badly, that is no reason to disrespect the court. For example, the way you're treating me now, guess what? What if I were to say every inmate over there, because you treated me this way, I'm going to treat them badly. Or I'm going to treat you badly because you're being disrespectful to the court. That would not be right. I don't do that. So don't do that to me. Do not. Here's the thing. Do not come to this court putting something on this court that somebody else did to, to you because I didn't do it. So. What I am telling you, if you will listen, no. all right, take a deep breath and listen. The state and the defense, they negotiate and the state offers whatever they offer. The defense will tell you what the offer is. I'm not allowed because those plea negotiations are supposed to be confidential. I'm not allowed to get involved with that. I know from what you're telling me is that you wanna tell me about your case and how these charges never should have been brought or maybe they should be dismissed. At this point in the process, it is not my job to hear that. I'm not allowed to hear that yet, unless there's a motion to suppress or unless you wanna have a jury, I'm sorry, a bench trial and you want me to hear it or either I will hear it when you have a jury trial. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I understand the frustrations that people will have because you at the jail. You don't feel like you should be at the jail. You don't feel like these charges ever should have been brought. You don't feel like this case should have been indicted if people just had the facts. I understand. I understand your frustration, but do not take your frustration out on the court. I try to move these cases as quickly as possible. You have been here on January 2024, and then your court appointed a counsel was ill, so he asked it to be removed. So Mr. Arguez was appointed, and I'm sure he got on your case as quickly as possible. He's just finished a murder trial. The state just gave you an offer today. So what's going to end up happening, and I want you to hear me clearly, this is going to be recalled for March 25th. 
You can either accept or reject the state's offer. If you choose to reject their offer, what is going to end up happening is we're going to get you a jury trial as quickly as possible. That's how things are going to flow here. Is there anything else? Nothing for the family. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arguez. It's better than everything. <laughs> yeah. Deputy Lord, why must I raise my voice? You shouldn't have to judge. Yeah, I'm, I'm like. You know, Judge, sometimes that's the only way they understand. Yeah. yeah. That's what my mom would say with us. <laughs> And sometimes she would raise her voice. And you know, my brother would say, no, I understand. <laughs> Hello. Mr. Nichols, come forward to sign the paper. No, 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 just to the, over here. Yeah. I have three papers. The first chair, the second chair. Right here? Okay. In the same room. Second chair. No, I'm That's <laughs> Jose Torres. May I Yes, where's your client? Come forward. So have you all completed your... Y yes, Your Honor. I talked, we have a trial on March 28th, so it's set for 100%. A trial for what? For compensating, Your Honor. All right, so it's set March 28th? Yes, Your Honor, that'll be the last um, trial. Okay. I, thought, I saw your reaction that morning. Yeah, I was like, what? We're having trouble? <laughs> All right, can I have a reset form? We're going to bring you back on April 1st. 
Thank you. Thank you, Josh. You're welcome. All right, council, after I give you the reset form, is there anything else? No, you are. All right, it's always good seeing you. Yes, you are. So how have you been doing? All right, surviving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, once you sign the reset form, you're excused. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank probation, you. Ms. you're welcome. Uh, probation, Mr. Torres is gonna be back April 1st. Okay. All right. May I ask a question? Yes. I asked an off docket. I had just been hired by a client who was on full GPS house arrest. I wanted to file a motion to amend to get a partial. Is that one that you would want a hearing or just kind of approach you on? Oh, you'll need a hearing. Okay, double checking. I'll get with Donald. Thank okay, you. sure. <laughs> Excuse me, did he take a copy? No. Uh, Mr. Flores, you need to take a copy for your client. Okay. That way we can say that he has it. Yes, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Thank you. No, she's late. Okay. I'll wait to see if I get approved. Two seconds. Yes, oh, It's a very weird request. Good morning. Good morning. Never sworn in a notary. If a notary wants to be sworn in, I told him I would approach. Oh, sure, I'll swear sorry. them in. That's really it. Sure. Okay. 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 I don't know what this looks like. Does he need to bring his oath? I guess bring his book. Yes. Yes, he needs to bring his oath and everything. When when does he want this done? I'm gonna let him know. I told him I thought I said the judge. Okay, sure. Oh, I'll do it. I'm here. I haven't either, but yes, he needs to have his oath. Okay. Okay, just I'm not talking to you. You talk to me. I'm not going to put up with you. Leave me alone. 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 Leave me
Today is Monday. But you would want to do this. I make a Council, you're on this side. Oh. When the deputies tell me there's a specific placement to for court safety, I follow those rules. About safety. Oh, we're not trying. We're not trying to have a lifetime movie <laughs> in here where a law is named after me. <laughs> All right. So where are we on this case? I, I think it's the first setting, Judge. The state made me an offer. I. Uh, I need some time to in detail or just to uh, discuss with my client. So all right. I, Do you have all the discovery? Yes, ma'am. How old are you, sir? I'm th uh, 38 months. All right. All right. I'm going to recall this for March 25th. That's going to be your plea deadline date. And after that, if you wish a jury trial, we will have one for you quickly. You said March 25th? Yes, in March. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. May 25th, take them on my <laughs> All right. Uh, judge, in this case, my client's father passed away. The funerals went um, Friday, Thursday, and Friday, the rosary. Thursday and Friday. His rosary, he was, but he's on the monitor. Mm -hmm. He wanted to know whether the court would grant permission for him to go to the rosary and the funeral and to have dinner with the family. Out. All right. So here's my question. Number one, the complainant in this case, are they going to be at the funeral? Uh, yeah. like, All right. Uh, well, I mean, you say, of course not, but I don't know who the complainant is. And sometimes okay. people love who they love. So, um, State, do you have any objections to that? Uh, if, of course, you know, an officer of the court asserting that the complainant will not be anywhere near this event. This, and it's only for, I'm sure, a couple hours on one day, the state would be on a post drive. All right, so I need to know the hours and I need to know the location. We have. Can you give me a B page on, on both of these, please? All right. Start on March 7th. Uh, they're going to uh, print out the B page. You all need to write that on the B page. So we just all, all the dates. The yes. Dates okay. hour, yeah. Yeah. And I can sign it. Thank you, Judge. All right, all right. thank you. Uh, All right. And uh, is he in custody? No. Sorry. Oh, could I have a reset form, please? Maybe you could give that to the interpreter. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much.
All right. Once your client signs the reset form, Mr. Cox, you're excused. You're welcome. Can I see the parties on Timothy James Nichols? All right, court is calling 2023 CR2219, State of Texas versus Timothy James Nichols. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Jason Garahan, Your Honor. James Tochi for Mr. Nichols, Judge. Are you Mr. Nichols? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have you received all the discovery? Did you review it with your client? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Nichols, showing you what's entitled application for deferred adjudication or community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you, you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? Yes, Judge. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Yes, Judge. Mr. Nichols, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Did you understand you're charged with the offense of fraudulent use or possession of identifying information, five items or less as a state jail felony? Range of punishment is anywhere from 108. Excuse me, we're on the record. Don't approach while we're on the record. There's a sign. All right. The range of punishment is anywhere from 180 days up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine. Yes, ma'am. Please do not approach the clerks and the court coordinator while we're on the record. We're on the record. All right. Range of punishment is anywhere from 180 days up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by entering this plea you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that the court would grant your application for deferred adjudication? If for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could find you guilty and sentence you up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, sir. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Judge. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Mr. Nicholas, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter the plea? No, ma'am. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial, showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea, there's a $1,500 fine. State is recommending deferred adjudication. They're taking in consideration 725802, 725803, 725804. There's to be restitution to Clarissa Guerra, Jacob Miles, Marina Resendez, with a Z, if any. And there's to be restitution payable to John Ariaga and cause number 725802 and 725804. Did you understand that to be the plea? Defense? Yes, State? Is Show you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? 
The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counselor, have there been any such motions? Next, I'm showing you outside the agreement. The state is requesting that your deferred adjudication be for a term of five years. There'll be a TAP evaluation, 200 hours of community service restitution, no contact with Calissa Guerra, Jacob Miles, Marina, M-A-R-I-N-A, -A, Resendez, John Ariaga, and Heather Galvan. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Then to the offenses charge, how do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Um, no contest. State, any evidence? Any objection? No, no objection. State, you may continue to confirm. Thank you, guys. Mr. Nicholas, did you review the document entitled Waiver and Consent to Stipulation of Testimony and Stipulations with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses, statements, and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony? Did you understand? Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one in attachments and review the same. All right, after reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty. Court will defer finding of guilt as you apply for deferred adjudication. Are you proceeding with sentencing? We are prepared for sentencing, Judge. I just have one thing I want to add when, when the court is ready to start the bargain. Um, All right. we're, we're, we are asking for sentencing and ask the court obviously to follow the agreement. My understanding and talk to Mr. Nichols is upon release from the jail, his plans are to reside in, and hopefully at the Haven for Hope. Um, so it's going to be kind of a rough start for him. If the court could perhaps probate some part or, or all of his fine, his finances will probably be his chief struggle as soon as he gets out of jail. So to that end and any other help the court uh, could extend, Mr. Nichols would be appreciated. All right. Where's your family? I have family here, but my dad, he's, you know, he's old and you know, he wants time to himself. My mom, she's she's old and she has a provider, so I don't want to put the burden on them. I've been homeless for a while. Wait, just a second. Uh, could I, you look up a court counts for a state jail felony on a forgery case? Yeah. Oh, well, possession of fraudulent information. Yeah. So how did you become homeless? Oh, well, I had my own place, me and my girlfriend, and, you know, I lost my job, and I kind of just fell off from there. Do you have children? Yes. What are their ages? Um, 20, 20 and 16. All right. So you're, I'm assuming you're not a... Well, my son, I still communicate with. He has a, his family of his own, and my daughter, she's in Kansas. All right. When's the last time you spoke to your daughter? Mother won't allow me to. Why not? I don't know. I, ha I did have custody of my kids at the time. And then when COVID happened, so much, she kept my child and I filed for habeas corpus and the court still has it pending. So, But well, you know what I always say? Children are children, not kids. Because kids are baby goats. That's just... I tried to get out things. to her. Mom won't let me. Okay. Well, that's something where you need to get in touch with an attorney for. All right. So how long have you been homeless? Probably going on like two years. So how are you going to correct this situation? Oh, well, before I got arrested, I was offered a good job at Boeing, but I got arrested. So I'm hoping that offer still. When's the last time you were employed? Um, About two months ago. All right, doing what? I was working in temp service, and then I got the job offer at Boeing. 
All right. Do we have any drug issues with you? No, ma'am. How far did you go in school? I graduated. Okay. All right. The court costs in this case is going to be $380. Would you be? There's a $1,500 fine that will be probated. And I read in the police report where these items were found in the trash can at hotels. People really need to make sure that they destroy items appropriately. Uh, it's going to be five years deferred adjudication. Take in consideration 725802803. Eight zero four restitution, if any, to the following and no contact with Clarissa, and that's with uh, two S's, Gara, Jacob Miles, Marina Resendez. And then there's to be no contact with John Ariaga, and Heather Galvan, 200 hours of community service restitution. I'm gonna order parenting classes. All right, everyone, please don't talk behind the court reporter when we're on the record. 200 hours community service restitution. I'm going to order parenting classes. Once he's completed parenting classes, the community service hours will be deemed satisfied. There should be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. There should be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. Regular random UAs. If you have a drug issue or have used drugs, now's the time to tell me. Okay. I'm going to want field visits one time per month <clears throat> until uh, he has stable residence. Uh, probation, is there anything else he needs? <clears throat> is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement. And because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? All right. We can go off the record. Judge, can you stay on the record? Real yes, now? sure. With regard to Ms. Galvan, Heather, that you mentioned, I don't believe she was a co-defendant or an alleged complainant. It appears that they're in a dating relationship. Um, she may have been misidentified as someone. As well, that's what's in your yeah, plea. Yeah, and, and that was an oversight, Jed. But... Well, you probably shouldn't be together. And let me explain to you why. Because you're homeless. Is she homeless? Yes, ma'am. All right. Obviously, you all are not helping each other. Well, the, the plan was we both were going into the Haven for Hope program together as well. Well, once you're stabilized, then I'll reconsider that mm -hmm. because that's a part of your plea. Mm -hmm. So get stabilized, get everything taken care of, then I'll uh, redo that, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so off the record, in order to be successful on probation in this court, you got to be in contact with probation. If there's an issue, let the court know if you feel as though probation is not addressing it. You understand? So, All right. Good luck to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Everyone, it's 1101. We're recessing at noon. Uh, you needed something, Mr. Toshi? No. Oh, yeah. It was very good. I'm, I'm getting good vibes. Oh, yeah. That's why I think the Heather Galvan thing that needs to. I mean, big picture. Yeah. I understand. You know, it, it reminds me of the Billy Preston song. Billy who? Preston. Oh, no. He had a lot of songs. Nine to five. Did he sing nine to five? Uh, well, let me know. Oh, that's Dolly Parton. Yeah. 
You know, his song, Nothing from Nothing. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Finish the sentence. You don't have nothing. You want to have something. You want to get with me. Yeah. Nothing. How about this one? There ain't no woman like the one I got. Oh, oh yeah. Uh -huh. my, my, old, my old trial partner, Jocelyn Andrews. Yes. Bless her. Sang that song every day. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to ask Jocelyn about that. I can. Yeah. I changed the words. I won't tell you what I changed it to, but okay. ask her about that. She should remember. I'm going to ask Jocelyn about it, about Ain't No Woman Like the One I Got. But you know what is a very sad song? Ain't No Woman Like the One I Had. Yeah. You know what is sad? Or, you know, The Love I Lost. Boy, it takes the fools to learn. That oh, that love, love don't love nobody. Love nobody. But, you know, um, the sad song, other than Patches, the other saddest song is Sadie. Sadie breaks my heart every time I hear it. You know, if there's a heaven up above, she's teaching angels how to love. Judge, you're taking a Monday and turning it into a bad Monday. <laughs> Sadie Spinner. Yep. That's my group. Okay, this is badly written. You were bad. Well, what happened there? I had a picture come. I couldn't get it. I couldn't get the picture on thing. I can bring a, I can get a copy of it. A bitch word. So I, I wrote it. I can rewrite it. I can no, I, I'll, I'll write it. I, I see what's going on here. See, what I did is that I put every second. Got the visitation. There's a the dinner. There's a, the, the mass. There's a lot going on. There's, there's a lot going on. We just do one thing. We got to wait. We have to wait. Okay. In the but, all right. I'm but, sorry. All right. No problem. So. Okay. You can just change it around. I can oh no no no! I'll, I'll I'll write it down that so that it's legible for everybody. Uh, Zach knows better. No, I didn't write it. No, but he should have stopped you and said, "Cornelius, this I, is written for." He, he couldn't understand it. But when he... Judge, I've never seen better penmanship as an officer of the court. Okay. I can say that honestly. All right, but I'll take care of it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because the reason the reason why I, I'm fine with this, but the clerks have to be able to read it to put it in the system. Judge, if I break out a magnifying glass or two or three, I mean, we did it together. Right. All right. So I'm just going to rewrite. And then once I write on this, if you all will just sign it. Yes. I just want to get up there. Can I have a white out, please? All right, and so I'm assuming the dinner luncheon is right is after that, the burial, back at the church. All right, so the rosary is from six p.m. to seven. I mean, to eight p.m. Correct? Yes, ma'am. And is the lunch on the seventh as well? The, yeah, same day after this. You see the burial is the seventh. Yeah, I believe, and they go to. Well, you all have visitation on the seventh. Well, is, is this seventh or eighth? You all, you all have visitation twice. So if you all could see how I'm writing this, if you all could do a B page and just write it similar to that, because you all have visitation twice. So if you all will do that, we'll take it up. So just if you all will review that. Adrian Deleterio. Hello, Mr. Deleterio. All right. So what are we doing with this case? Jury trial, what's happening? 
It's going to be a jury trial, Judge, though, although Mr. Del Tiero and I have been conferring about a specific aspect of the state's evidence that he's asked me to do some more research on, and I think he's raised some valid points, and I definitely need to be able to answer them, so I'm not going to be ready for fall. I'll be ready by the next second. How long do you all expect this trial to last? Thanks, Robert. Well, not today. Judge, we haven't conferred on this one yet, so. All right, if you all will confer. And then we'll take it up. All attorneys, you need to confer with the state. They're not ready. Brandon Sierra. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. All right. Okay. Oh, you're on this side and your client's in the middle. All right. And thank you. You always dress appropriately for court. Thank you. All right. So we're scheduled for jury trial. What I can tell you, there is a, one trial that's before you and they have out of state witnesses. So I'll recall you for tomorrow and we'll see what happens with that trial. What's but, been judged? Uh, we'll be here tomorrow at. Look, everybody's pausing. I feel like E.F. Hutton, but the young people don't know what I mean when I say E.F. Hutton. You could hear a pin drop. All right, so we'll come back tomorrow, for check in for you. Is that gonna be at 1030? That way you'll know and you won't be waiting around all day. Yes, Judge. All right, but jury selection will most likely be in the afternoon. Okay. All right, we'll see you all back tomorrow. Do you need a reset form? No, Judge. All right, so we'll receipt. see you tomorrow. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Oh, no, I signed off on Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Christopher Gonzalez. Uh, Michael DeLeon. Hi, you're on Mr. Christopher Gonzalez. Your client was late today. Me. Oh, yes, he was. He was dressed appropriately, but he was late. Judge, he is the most well-dressed person who visits your courtroom, even among lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're scheduled for a jury trial. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we recently got an offer, um, which I need to talk to my client about, but um, Allie took over this case, and uh, uh, whatchamacallit, we got a new offer today. My client and I are going to talk, discuss it, but uh, at the same time, we just like to be on standby. All right. You all to come back tomorrow. What time? Uh, I will have you all here at 1030. All right. All right. Do you need a reset form? No, Judge. We'll be back tomorrow. All right. See you all back tomorrow. Don't be late. Okay. Who's here on Emma Dan Smith? Hello, Mr. Smith. How are you doing? All right, Diana, this is going to be two cases. Uh, Ms. Abrams, it's a plea on two cases. Court is calling 2000. Just, 2024 CR 3014W and 2023 CR 84W. For zero, State of Texas versus Amadean Smith. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Thank you, Wilkins, for the state, Your Honor. Defense? Warren Wolf for Mr. Smith. All right. Counsel, in each cause number, have you received all the discovery? And did you review that discovery with your client? Yes, sir. And each cause number, the court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery.
Mr. Smith. Yes, ma'am. And each cause number, I'm showing you what's entitled application for community supervision. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. And the cause number ending in W, I'm going to show you what's entitled waiver of indictment, reading of information and rights under Article 1.05 and 26.03 of the Code of Criminal Procedure. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. All right, did you understand you have a right to have a grand jury hear the evidence and make a decision on whether or not to indict? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that your attorney has certain rights? Namely, once the information is presented to him, two entire days must pass from that presentation. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, and then did you understand that your attorney has 10 days to prepare for trial? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by entering a plea in this case, you're waiving those rights? Yes, ma'am. And do you want to do that and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, ma'am. Then in the cause number ending in W, the court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived indictment, reading of information, and rights under Article 1.051 and 26.03 of the Code of Criminal Procedure. In that cause number, I'm going to show you what's entitled the information. Yes. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am, Your Honor. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the information? Yes, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the information as presented? Yes, Your Honor. And could you give that to the defense because that's the defendant's copy? And in the cause number ending in 4-0, I'm showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? Yes. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? We are waiving the repeater allegation, uh, enhancement allegation, Your Honor. No objection. <laughs> All right, Mr. Smith, in each cause number, I'm going to show you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review those documents with your attorney? Yes, Did you understand them? Did you sign them in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you're charged with the offense of harassment of a public servant? Those are third degree felonies. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by entering this plea, you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Smith, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter the plea? No, ma'am. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. And each cause number the yes, ma'am. According to the plea in each cause number, punishment is to be assessed at 10 years in the prison. There's a five hundred dollar fine. State is recommending community supervision. The cases were run concurrently. They're taking in consideration night mag numbers 742208 and 742209, and there's to be the mixed supervision. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, sir. Defense, is that the plea? It is, Judge. State, is that the plea? Yes, sir. And each plea, I'm showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? 
The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have there been any such motions? There have. Uh, if you recall, Mr. Uh, Smith went into the uh, community court, uh, and there, there were motions regarding his mental uh, situation, uh, but nothing uh, regarding evidentiary issues. All right. Showing you outside the plea bargain agreement, the state is requesting that your community supervision be for a term of 10 years. There be a TAP evaluation and 100 hours of community service restitution. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes, ma'am. Then in the cause number ending in W, how do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. And in the cause number ending in 4-0, how do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State any evidence. Your Honor, in both causes, I offer states exhibit one in the attachments. No objection. In each cause, and I'm showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review those documents with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses, statements, and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. In each cause number, the court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and review the same. Off the record, could you look up court cause for third degree felony harassment, please? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. All right, after reviewing states exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty, and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Judge. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Judge, uh, Mr. Smith is... Uh, Paranoid schizophrenic. Uh, he has a history of mental illness. I've talked with his mom, and he's been uh, in numerous uh, mental health facilities, both in Houston and in San Antonio. Um, and that's the reason for the MIG uh, designation. Uh, we tried uh, him at uh, the community court, uh, but that didn't work out. So we're back in front of the court today. And uh, I want to thank the prosecutor for uh, working with us and recommending uh, probation and the uh, with that mixed supervision. I've discussed all these things with Mr. Smith. Uh, he's willing to comply. He understands that he does need to comply. He has. Uh, he was homeless uh, at the time of his arrest. He has a place to stay with his uncle in San Antonio, and who will help support him. His mom is up in Fredericksburg, so. It makes it difficult for her to supervise him down here. Um, and we ask that you follow the plea board. All right, Mr. Smith, did you speak to your uncle? Yes, ma'am. And does he want you to stay with him? Yes, ma'am. All right, Ms. Abrams, how long does it take for a MIC evaluation out of custody? All right, everyone, please whisper. Uh, I believe she said in custody and out of custody will be the same. And what time are we looking at? Oh, well, we won't be doing that in custody. So who all lives in the house with your uncle? My uncle, my brother. Okay. All right, this is what the court will do. Court is going to sentence you in each cause number to 10 years in the prison, suspended and probated for eight years. I'm going to waive the court costs in each case. I'm going to want a referral uh, to Center for Healthcare Services. Do you have a case manager or anything set up? Um, yes, ma'am. 
All right. So immediately when you leave the Bear County Jail, you need to go to the Center for Healthcare Services. They're probably not going to release you until early in the morning. That's right. All right. And counsel, if you make sure his uncle knows that he's going to be released some in the morning, possibly. I explained that to Mr. Smith. Uh, All but right. The sheriff works on his own schedule. Well, no, I mean, it's just the process. Sometimes it takes longer. All right. Each case will run concurrent. We'll do a Mickey evaluation out of custody. Oh, in state, I'm sorry, you may continue to confer. Thank you. Uh, take in consideration NIMAC number 742208 and 209. Excuse me, position. There's, do you have any children, sir? Do you have any children? No, no. All right. There'll be 100 hours of community service restitution and probation. What I want first from him is for him to make sure he's stabilized on his medications and with Center for Health Care, Center for Health Care Services. So the community service hours, we can sort of put that on the back end. There's to be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. There's to be regular UAs. I'm gonna want field visits one time per month until he has the case manager. You, you need to give provide the name of your case manager to probation and he's stabilized with Center for Healthcare Services. And anger management. And once he completes the anger management, the community service hours will be deemed satisfied. Please be uh, referred for the anger management service. Yes, he's going to have fees for that. I'm not giving him a fine. I've waived court costs. Thank you. So what he, what you will have to pay though is you'll have to pay your supervisory fees because supervisory fees are for probation salary. You understand? Yes. So the probation officers who I'm sitting out to make sure you're stabilized, and the probation officer that you're seeing, that's where the supervisory fees come in. So I'm not going to give you a fine and I have waived court costs in each cause number. So that should help you be able to do that. Uh, proof of employment or SSI within 60 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. Uh, probation, is there anything else? Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? No, ma'am. All right. In each cause number, did you review the document entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal with your attorney? Did yes, you understand it and did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. All right. Because these are plea bargain agreements, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because these are felony convictions, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, we can go off the record. So, Mr. Smith, when I was practicing law, I had a lot of clients who suffered from mental health issues. And you know what would end up happening? They would be doing great. And then they would say, I'm doing great. I really don't need to be on this medication. And they get off. Or either they would be um, with the medication, they would say they have side effects. I'm not a medical doctor, but you know what I would always tell my clients? If there's an issue with your medication causing side effects, 
You need to let your doctor know because maybe they can give you something else. Maybe not, but they may be able to give you something that will help you with the side effects. But if you completely get off of them and stop taking them, one, that could potentially cause physical issues with you or mental issues with you. And then we'll be right back here. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. In order to be successful on the probation in this court, you need to make sure you com communicate with probation. If you feel like your officer is not addressing that, you can always come back to the court. All right? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck to you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Jeff. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Deleterio. Hello. So you all had a new offer today or something? No, sorry, go ahead. Um, well, uh, Mr. Martinez is uh, gonna do some investigating uh, <laughs> the county judge. Uh, the, the basis of one of our uh, cases in this indictment is it's a theft enhanced. Mm -hmm. uh, it's enhanced because of a judgment in Cameron County. Um, so I believe Mr. Martinez wants to look into was that plea in Cameron County a uh, theft or was it a burglary? Is that right, Chris? No. Well, his concern, Judge, is he apparently got a plea bargain on a felony case. He thought these cases they've used for enhancement were actually taken into consideration. Okay. But they're showing up as convictions. So it's one or the other. I just got to find out the answer. All right. So we're going to be back on March 18th. That's going to be your final plea deadline date. Okay. All right. We'll see you back on March 18th. You. You're welcome. All right, March 18th on Mr. Deleterio. All right, the remaining people, Johnny Joe Webb. All right, so he needs to forward the doctor's note. All right, we're coming back on it on the 18th. Yes. Uh, Vashon on Johnny Joe Webb, he's still out ill. So we'll bring it back on March 18th. Hello? Joanna Reyes. Can I see the file on Joanna Reyes, please? But she's supposed to be here. Where is she? Okay. No, I did not. She's supposed to appear by Zoom. Mr. Gilmore? Yes, Judge. Hi, your client, Ms. Reyes, is not present. Well, I, so I didn't have the Zoom link to send her. I had to come down there and get it from the clerk. Uh, okay. Still don't have a link. I only have the meeting ID, so I needed to get into the meeting so that I can now copy the invite link and send it to her. Okay. All righty. Okay. So let me do that, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, I don't think so. Okay, sure. All right, where are we on Anthony Ortiz? Anthony Ortiz, what's happening? It's Marisa Giovinco on Anthony Ortiz. What is happening? I'm sorry, Judge, I didn't realize I was set today. I yeah. was only here for no, Anthony Ortiz, he's in custody. You want to have them bring him yes, out? I do. All right, okay. Anthony Ortiz. I have no idea it was set today. I'm sorry, Judge. That's okay. Michael Rosas. Hello. Good morning. And you're on this side, Council. The attorney is Monica Guerrero. I'm covering for Monica. Yes. I've been conferring with Hank. Uh, Mr. Rosas is already participating in felony drug court. Mm -hmm. He had another case that he was, uh, had an NTR. He was continued. So he's in felony drug court. And this is just a short announcement. I just wanted to let you know that we're here. I'm checking in. I confer the, the state's file wasn't here uh, for you know most of the morning that uh, they requested it. But I'm still conferring with the state. We're trying to see if we can get him into drug court on the pending cases he has here before you. All right. And so drug court is continuing him. I they, guess there was some kind of cross-communication on the cases. They actually continued him. They resolved it. He's back in drug felony drug court. But February 9, 2024, they extended his probation to March 8, 2026. And that's a clause number, if you need the clause no, number. No, I have it. Okay. So that's the 2021 CR yes. 0253? Yeah, that's correct. All right. And I'm just working with, with Hank uh, to see if we can get everything confirmed. All right, is March 25th enough time or no? I think so, Judge. I, I guess, so the note that I have is that they resolved the MCR without these cases. So the cases were not resolved as part of that. That's why they're still kind of hanging out. So um, yes, Judge, if we get a reset. Okay. Because the, even though the cases are recently indicted, they're from 2022. Right. So, all right. So we'll come back on March 25th. Uh, just get a reset from, from the coordinator, then you're excused. All right. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Yeah. I have uh, one question off the record. Yes. Uh, felony drug court, this is the one that's across the jail? Uh, yes. Okay, right. there's, no, there's no court assigned to it, like no number? No, it's right. just felony drug court, but it's across from the jail. Okay. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, once you sign the reset form, you're excused. All right, Mr. Gilmore, your client is zooming in. All right, and you're on mute. Yes, Judge, and this is the one that um, uh, ADA Garahan and I talked to you about previously off right, YouTube. So, 
All right, thank you. So which which date are we bringing this back on for trial? I'm sorry, Judge. Uh, which date are we bringing this back for trial? It's um, Joanna Reyes. I'm not familiar with it. All right, sorry. so this is what we're gonna do on this case. I'm looking at my docket sheet. We're gonna bring this back on March 25th and state and defense, you all need to confer off docket so we can make sure we have the jury trial. All right. Okay, Judge. But and we're we're talking about not Miss Reyes's jury trial, right? No. Okay. But you all will need to be back. I'm, on the I'm caught up. Thank you. Thanks, Judge. Sorry about that. So we're going to come back on March 25th, and your client can appear by Zoom. Thank you, Judge. May we be excused? Yes. Appreciate y'all. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, could you call back uh, Ruben Flores? Do you have the file on, on Juan Manuel Garcia? And could I see the parties on Shannon McRae? Oh, okay. That's on the docket as well? Okay. That's okay. All right, so the attorneys we need back is going to be Ruben Flores, Marsha White. Can I see the file on Reynaldo Macias, please? All right, on this one, a judge's warrant has already been issued. So, and they were a no show today. I'm sorry, let me see that file one more time. Yeah. And so I'm assuming there are no motions that are going to be heard on Mr. Ruiz. Is that the court's assumption? Well, it's too late because we've been here since nine. Nobody's asked to approach on Mr. Ruiz. So you are going to have to come back in the afternoon. So uh, two thirty. At two thirty. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. We are withdrawing this unsealed motion. I can put it with the I just found a motion to remove them to preclude stuff. I have a doctor's appointment for a talk to the next
All right, Norma, these are the people who need to come back. Anthony Ortiz on the second page. Then on page seven, it's going to be Delton, Delton Bailey. Third page, Juan Garcia. Shannon McRae.
on the last page is going to be Jose Ruiz. Shannon McRae, of course. Israel Reina. Delton Bailey. John Valenciano. Uh, Michael Rodriguez. And then Mark Costa. Mark Costa, we're going to bring you back this afternoon at 2.30. And then who is the person who's being brought over? She's here? Okay. And any other pleas will have to be taken up at 2.30. We may have agreement. Okay. What do you know? Um, we have an agreement. I don't know if she wants to do it or not, but if not, I have to come back. Do you want them to come back? Is it a motion to revoke? It's an agree. Oh, uh, it'll have to be in the afternoon because I see it's 10 minutes to 12 okay. and probation needs lunch. Okay. I'm sorry, Judge. Uh, we're coming back at 2 2.30. Are we, yeah, are we coming back earlier on Ruiz or no? 2.30. Everything at 2.30? Mm -hmm. Okay, I just wanna make sure. Sure, no problem. Thank you. Okay. Shannon McRae. Okay. Court is calling 2024 CR 1105 State of Texas versus Shannon McRae. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Marcia D. White for the defendant. Janet McCray. And are you Mr. McCray? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have you received all the discovery? Did you review it with your client? I have, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Are there any applications in this case? No, there are not. Okay. Mr. McCray, I'm showing you what's entitled True Bill of Indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? I do, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Well, we are, Judge. We're going to waive the habitual offender enhancement application. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Mr. McCray, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Did you understand you're charged with the offense of robbery? That's a second degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? You got to speak up a little bit, Mr. McCray. She's taking a record. Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement, you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. Did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? I do, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? I do, Your Honor. Mr. McRae, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, ma'am. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, ma'am. Satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial, showing you the plea bargaining page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea, punishment is to be assessed at a cap of four years in the prison. 
uh, there are no applications. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. State? Yes, Judge. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have there been any such motions? No, they have not, Your Honor. Then to the offense is charged. How do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State any evidence. State offers states exhibit one in all actions. Showing no, you what's in no objection. Okay. Showing you what's entitled wavering consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there would be no live testimony? Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and review the same. All right, after reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Judge, it, 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 uh, it's up to the court. Uh, I, I have a few words to say on Mr. McCray's behalf. I'm going to proceed the sentencing today. Yes. Judge, uh, Mr. McCray is 39 years of age, and he's indicated to me that he's an expected for his father. Uh, he's ready to put this uh, past criminal life behind him and move forward. Uh, he, he respectfully asks support for the most lenient sentence, lenient sentence possible under the four-year cap uh, so he can get back out there and be responsible and do the right thing. All right. So, uh, Mr. McRae, because I read the indictment, because I had to present it to you and make sure that you're aware of it, so I'm aware of your criminal history. You know, the time to put a criminal behest, past behind us is to stop doing it and to learn. Uh, I'm going to find you guilty as previously stated, going to sentence you to four years in the prison, give you credit for any time served. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, uh, yes ma'am. All right. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? It's on, it's on. All right, we can go off the record. You're going to have to change your life. If you have a drug or alcohol problem, there are plenty of free places to help you with that. Now, what you're going to prison for is for taking beer. And you have to ask yourself, was that beer really worth that, right? I think the answer should be a resounding no. So if you don't want to find yourself in and out of jails, in and out of prisons, you have better change your life. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck. All right, everyone. We're on recess.